here at Golden Connections. This is part of the Circus Dreams residency. I'm a, a circus artist and a poet, so when I go in and do residencies, I work primarily with circus arts. So all of it, it's about play, right? Like, what if? I've been fortunate enough to be brought here to teach a circus arts residency with these seniors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both my poi, I'm going to spin them outward, and then over top one another. So my right hand is over top my left hand. All these new experiences just boost morale. It helps you know that even though you're old, you can continue to learn and be happy doing it. We are focusing on hooping, poi spinning, clowning, and juggling. And our goal is to get people up and moving and having fun. I was pleased that immediately everybody in the group wanted to play. I didn't know I could do the hula hoop because I couldn't as a kid. And then on my second try, I was doing it. So. In some of those initial sessions, we did balance with a, with a peacock feather just to experience that lightness. But you're keeping your eye up at the uppermost point of whatever the object is and you're giving it your full attention. You look up, let go. <sighs> Magic. Manu, you wanna try? And then doing a little bit of the juggling. That was something I never knew I could do. What you have to do is you actually have to throw in like an X pattern. So you throw the other side and you throw the other side, like throw one to the side and throw the other one. Catch, catch. People are supposed to move and from what I've found is like these things can be used as sort of tools to grow social communities, grow confidence in yourself. At the end of the day the most important thing is that you should enjoy doing them and they should be fun for you. All right so who would like to go next? Who wants a nose? Pick a nose and you know you know how to put it on right? Okay whenever you're ready we did solo clown work, which is pretty vulnerable. You're asking somebody to get up in front of the whole group and just be. You can't plan it. And that's a big part of clowning too, is not knowing what's next. And some really beautiful moments happened today. Some emotions were shared and some connections were made. Look at it. Once I started, I just, you know, having a good time, having fun. You know, just not worried about what people think. It made me feel that I belonged, and uh, <laughs> the reactions I got from the people were fun. Circus skills, while they are, you know, incredible feats of like human ability, they have this whole other aspect to it, which is sort of like a communal and social side, and that's sort of the thing that. I've tried to focus on with a lot of my practices, especially when I teach other people. Some people like to like wrap them up one time around their hand and maybe put it through one of their fingers, which kind of creates this little like lock. But yeah, go ahead, give this a try with both of them. Go in the same, same direction, same timing. Jenny and Chris were both a lot of fun and they were very patient in showing us all the routines and the different things that we can do even after this program is over. You know, they just were telling me, you're okay, I'm okay, you know, just having fun. And that's what it was. So I brought up the term le jeu, which is play, and we created a little le jeu. And so every time we had a failure, we would le jeu. It's hilarious. <laughs> There's a lot of laughing. And that's what clowning is all about. I mean, it's about celebrating your failures in public. Whoops. Oh. <laughs> Let's you. Let's you. It's actually necessary for your brain to run into frustration as a part of learning because it tells it, hey, there's something I have to do differently. 
So it actually triggers the whole process. So that's like some nice little neuroscience stuff that I've learned recently, but it really is true. So if you ever get to a point in juggling or poi or hooping or anything else, my recommendation is take a deep breath, pause, uh, visualize what you're trying to do, visualize yourself doing it, and then go back and try it. You might be really surprised. Chances are you will probably do it. What we're gonna do now is kind of just break out into a sort of free play session with all the things that we've learned over the past couple of weeks. So we started out with clowning, um, which is very theatrical, and we worked on balance. We have these peacock feathers here. We also have all the juggling balls that we made, all the poi that we made. Uh, we have a bunch of hoops. And if you weren't here um, for any of these lessons, uh, feel free to ask somebody in the class, or you can ask myself or Jenny, and we'd be happy to show you a couple things. So come on up, step right up, and grab a prop or grab a feather from me and let the music take you away. I try to encourage them not to worry about perfecting the movement right away. I've done that before, and that can sort of distract from the fun of it. Look at this. How often does a bird walk through your class? <laughs> That's fabulous. He has his own little backpack. Not enough people know how valuable the senior centers are for what they do, the camaraderie that we have. I know for myself, when I lost my husband, this was like a whole new lease on life. And I became happy again. And it's just a wonderful, spirit-lifting place to be. Well, don't be afraid to come out and try it out and join in, you know? And at, you know, you retire, he gives you a little something extra to do, and you might be able to pass it on to somebody. The greeting when you walk in the door just warms your heart. There's always something you can find that you can do, whether you're handicapped or not. It's fun for all. <laughs>